Hi, I'm Naomi Brockwell, and you're watching Bitcoin Girl. And I'm joined here by JJ Hales, who's going to shed a little bit of light on the recent Mt. Gox Exchange crash. JJ, in your opinion, what exactly has happened? Um, I'm not sure I know or anyone else really mm -hmm. knows. Uh, the exchange is offline, and they're very incommunicative. Mm -hmm. There are lots of rumors that they are insolvent, or namely that they have lost about 400 million of bitcoins and other currencies. Oh my goodness. Basically, transaction IDs are supposed to identify a transaction. People uh, can mutate transactions after they've been posted to change the transaction ID while still having the actual transaction go through. And there are well-known workarounds for the essential problem. And so this hasn't really been considered uh, a bug of great importance. Mm -hmm. But of course, you have to use the workarounds. Uh, and it appears that Carpel was not using the workarounds and using the transaction IDs to, uh, to keep track of withdrawals from the exchange. Right. Someone would withdraw from him, withdraw some Bitcoins, uh, change a transaction ID, and complain that he hadn't received a withdrawal. And as far as the empty Gox was concerned, and they hadn't, and so they would resend the withdrawal. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine you start to get a lot of money like this. Right. I mean, it's hard to really say anything definitively because Carhel hasn't has been very uh, uncommunicative. Mm -hmm. And so most of it is just rumors and speculations. A lot of empty Gox's problems seem to come from the fact that Carpel didn't want to use the standard clients and mm -hmm. the standard the way everyone else was doing things. Right. He modified them and perhaps underestimated uh, how difficult modifying it and creating uh, a robust, uh, robust modification of the Bitcoin client would be. Right. And um, it's introduced a lot of bugs. But the reason why he wanted to modify it was that MTGOX is, was a huge exchange and had a lot of volume. And the traditional Satoshi Bitcoin client wasn't capable of handing, uh, handling the, uh, the volume that Carpel wanted to transact in. They didn't really do a good job. Of it. Well, I mean, when you use an existing system, you have a bunch of people all over the world pooling their, their resources to make sure that the system is robust. In his case, if he decided to do it independently of that system, he really has to be very sure of, of his own abilities to, to pull it off. Um, and I think yeah, a lot of people think that he really fell short in this because it was just it left the system wide open to corruptibility. Yeah, I don't like criticizing people too much mm -hmm. uh, because it's hard to understand all the difficulties they've had. But when it comes to this amount of money, and it seems also that it wasn't just one failure, but multiple failures, uh, just over and over again. Any one of these failures by itself would not have destroyed the entire exchange. Right. You really just had to have a, a cumulative amount of, uh, of failure and incompetence. Uh, it starts to really present the impression of negligence on his part, mm -hmm. especially because uh, almost every other competitor to Empty Gox has an okay job. Right. What is your own personal belief about the whereabouts of the Bitcoins? Do you personally believe they were stolen? Do you think that they uh, were taken out through, through double spending, through a fraudulent uh, opening in the system? Or do you think that perhaps they're in cold storage and just unable to be accessed? One of the proposed scenarios is that the manipulation of MT Gox's faulty withdrawal system led to a depletion of funds on their hot wallet, mm -hmm. which forced uh, Carpel to dip into his cold wallet, which generally houses the majority of the funds, and then they couldn't access those funds. The funds actually haven't been stolen or confiscated, but the private key has been lost or corrupted, mm -hmm. and so they possess it technically, but they can't access it. Right, and that um, explains a little bit about the leaked PDF that came out, where the CEO said that, you know, the funds are there, sort of, <laughs> we just can't get them right now. Somebody has tracked down um, some addresses that have been known to be associated with empty Gox and discovered uh, like upwards of 200,000 Bitcoins located on mm -hmm. 
after adding together a bunch of these different addresses, that seems to suggest, contrary to the PDF that was leaked, right. that they haven't lost funds, um, maybe merely lost access to the funds. Right. What was also said in that PDF? Apparently, it's, I think there's a firm that prepared it. It was contracted by uh, Carpel, right. and, and he pitched to a bunch of investors, and supposedly, once the investors read this, mm -hmm. they refused to deal with him, I hear, and wow. kind of turned him in. What do you think of the IRC chat um, conversation on Reddit? It was interesting because he seemed to basically confirm that the leaked PDF was, I think his words were more or less true. Yeah. That's, that's disappointing. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. If there's... He doesn't really provide very much information, so. Mm. Mm. Apart from like the location of his cat. I, we all yeah. now know where his yeah, yeah. cat likes to stay. So right, I think right, that right. the Bitcoin community feels a lot uh, happier and more secure knowing that. <laughs> um, so thank you, Mark. A lot of people have sounded the death of Bitcoin since MT Gox has crashed. They have uh, directly associated the crash with an inherent flaw within Bitcoin itself. Uh, what would you say to this? Do you think that this is a problem with Bitcoin or just a problem with an exchange? This is a technical issue with an exchange and it has nothing to do with the Bitcoin protocol. So on a technical, on, on a technical basis, there's a great separation and mm -hmm. it's, it really doesn't say too much about the, the technical merits of the Bitcoin protocol. But to a lot of people, it's not just the technology, but the ecosystem around it. Mm -hmm. And so if you start to think of Bitcoin as the ecosystem of exchanges and stores and merchants, uh, then you can start to see how the failure of a very high profile exchange give a real black eye to the Bitcoin ecosystem. Right. Do you think that it was surprising that Mt. Gox uh, collapsed to a lot of people within the Bitcoin community? I think the scale of their losses was surprising. I think a lot of people have been forecasting their demise for a long time. It, it really hasn't been uh, a centrally important exchange for probably a half a year now, right. something like that. Uh, they had fallen down to about 30% mm -hmm. of all volume from a high of over 90% of trading volume. What does this actually mean for the supply of Bitcoins that are gonna be available to be traded? In the long run, it'll make your Bitcoins more valuable mm -hmm. by about is how much they lost. Right. It's, I mean, it's just a huge number if you think about it. You know, if some guy says, I lost 6% of all the gold in the world <laughs> and I just noticed it. Like, okay, wow. wow. That's really dramatic. <laughs> Does the pr Bitcoin protocol allow itself to be modified in some way to change the number of Bitcoins that can be produced? Uh, you could. Uh, that would probably just make an altcoin. Right, of course. Yeah. Um, I think that if, I don't think they would modify that. I think if that was modified, uh, it would kind of cease being Bitcoin and yeah. people would uh, abandon right. Bitcoin. And I think it would be very destructive to the protocol. Mm -hmm. Do you see the crash of the Mt. Gox exchange as being a destructive force upon the Bitcoin world? Yeah, I think it was quite destructive. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of people lost a lot of money. Do you think the people um, who are more savvy about the workings of, of Bitcoin, who are the older users, do you think that they have taken advantage of the recent Mt. Gox crash as a way to um, just make some money? It did seem that there was a lot of people spreading uh, fear mm -hmm. through uh, you know, various fake accounts and really trying to, I think, exaggerate the issue to kind of create a big sell-off, right. to get scoop up. As far as I can see, the market hasn't really been affected by the crash. I think that the price went down to 400 um, or thereabouts, but then the next day it bounced straight back up, which yeah. suggests to me that there was a certain amount of scaremongering going on, people selling out, um, and then the people who knew what was going on just seeing this as an incredible opportunity to buy, which is why the price just, just jumped straight back up again. Do you think that it really has made that much of an impact on people's um, trust in the Bitcoin protocol? Well, the, I think the protocol is fine. Um, I guess one thing you could say is an interesting twist. I think that the, I think that a lot of people who lost money on empty Gox were uh, some of the earlier adopters. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of the new adopters actually had very much money on empty Gox. That's my personal theory. Um, that seems a bit counterintuitive. If you're an older user, 
right. user, I would presume you'd know more about more the flaws sloppy, right? in yeah. the in the system. Um, what would be the impetus for these people to keep their money in Gox when they know it is wide open to manipulation? Um, well, a lot of people keep their money in exchanges or web wallets. Mm -hmm. Not so many people. Not too many people use the actual Satoshi client. They oftentimes offload it to third-party services. Yeah. But the reason why I think it's concentrated on older users is because, you know, older is a relative term, but most new users recently have probably come from China. Mm -hmm. So you know, you have BTC, CNY, or Huibi seem to be major exchanges that a lot of newcomers enter yeah. through. And on the US side, I would say Coinbase seems yeah. like uh, a major inflow of it. And I don't think too many people have really gotten their exposure through empty Gox, primarily just because it hasn't really been a functioning exchange for right. a while. And it's, I mean, it's so easy to use um, systems like Coinbase, yeah. you know, link it directly to your Amer American bank account. Yeah. You don't even need to wire in, in funds. Yeah. It literally just takes the money straight out of the, the account. Yeah. So what do you think that the future of Mt. Gox is? Do you think that they will just disappear? Do you think there will be court action against them to reclaim funds? Uh, do you think that it's possible that people are going to buy it out. I know that there's speculation that there are investors who are interested in buying it out. I'm, I'm not sure I understand if that's financially feasible or viable. Perhaps you could uh, speak to that. You know, it's, it's lots of speculation once again. Um, the buyout seems strange if they mm. actually have to cover 400 million in liabilities. I mm -hmm. just don't quite see uh, why the brand is worth that much. Mm. I think you just build a completely new exchange for that much money. Um, that being said, if it, if it has to do with something, maybe there's just a damaged key, and if they, which seems likely, maybe not likely, but seems plausible to some extent, I think they've found something like a quarter million Bitcoins mm -hmm. uh, owned by Gox. And so if those are inaccessible, and maybe they, they can throw you know, a few hundred thousand at it, you know, regain access, maybe it's a, a legal thing or a small technical problem mm -hmm. or if they can fix with enough money and engineers, then it seems, yeah, then it seems like there's definitely something there. Right. And just to end, Yellen recently uh, put out a press release yeah. about Bitcoin. What did she say and what does this mean for the Bitcoin world? One of the amazing things is uh, actually how tolerant a lot of U.S. lawmakers have been mm -hmm. towards Bitcoin. You know, you have you have you know, really crazy ones like Chuck Schumer or this most recent Mansion or Man King uh -huh. guy. Um, but in general, uh, it's really impressed me just how kind of even-handed a lot of the regulation has been towards Bitcoin. Right. Um, and so Yellen has basically said that Bitcoin should exist completely outside of the Fed. It has nothing to do with the Fed, so they really don't have an ability to regulate it. Yeah. Um, do you think that this will stop the government trying to regulate it? The government doesn't seem to be really bent on regulating Bitcoin excessively for being Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been calls for it, but they've been relatively uh, calm in that respect. But they are they are saying that it's going to fall under the purview of traditional financial laws, right. which I do think are pretty. Um, that entails a lot of regulations, yeah. a lot of them, and so it's not like. Uh, it's not like the Bitcoin world is going to be very free and regulation free. Right. They're just asking them to adopt what all the other financial services I think are doing, which seems fair, but you know, yeah. it's still tough. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, thank you very much for talking to us about Mt. Gox.